Hello, good morning. This is uh, Friday, September the 27th, and uh, I thought we would take a, a few minutes this morning and walk together through the notes that I posted earlier this week and um, take a look at the basic idea of this segment, um, health inequality, and where it is in relation to where we've been and where we're going, and, um, and in relation to the overall context of the course, the thesis of the course. And as you recall, the thesis of the course is that um, is the contextual influences on health. Now, we are, shall we say, population-based diagnosticians to dis differentiate ourselves from the medical model where the diagnosis is at the individual level. But um, I think one of the thesis of the course also is that um, maybe even that, the medical model, can be better done, improved to some extent, by awareness of the population context in which that individual patient uh, resides. This is a recognition, as you'll recall we've talked about, um, the changes in, in the medical college admission tests effective in the spring of uh, 2015 that uh, recommends that undergraduates coming to take that exam that they have a good I think you call it a solid background, a, a significant background in social sciences, um, sociology in particular, uh, because the social sciences and sociology is uh, lots of discussion in that uh, area and, and research and evidence as well in the contextual influences on human behavior. For us in this course, that uh, behavior are, are behaviors related to um, health. So our, um, our overall thesis is the contextual influence on population health. And um, as you'll recall, I'm sure you will, uh, what we were doing in segment one was looking at a couple of things we were doing. One is, is, is getting a practice and what the y is for our basic equation, y equals xi plus wi plus zi. Y is, uh, for population health, is often specified as uh, measures of mortality and fertility or birth. And um, this is because our vital statistics in this country are complete and accurate for the most part. And so they're reliable measures of population health. So most health profiles, community health profiles, state, national uh, profiles, um, often uh, it, you say the central piece of that are the vital statistics of uh, birth and death and uh, measures of mortality and measures of birth low birth weight and things like that as, as indicators upstream of behaviors and context and the way we are talking about that in this course and increasingly is talked about in healthcare um, generally so part of segment one was getting familiar with why um, the other part of segment one was uh, the struggle, the mining, <laughs> chipping away in those articles, looking for the gold that had to do with the ZI in the context. A number of those articles were not focused so much on contextual influences. They were thinking of the, at the XI level of the equation. Uh, legitimate enterprise, absolutely. But uh, what we're looking for here is the contextual and the ZI. Uh, uh, two or three of those articles were all focused on the ZI, actually, as I'm sure you've learned as you've gone through them and get done your struggle. But basically, segment one was about the why and practice looking in articles, uh, particularly in those articles where it's difficult to find, mining the gold. Um, as we move into segment two, ZI, is be ZI becomes characterized as differences in uh, levels of income. So that one area with a high income or one area with a low income, uh, relatively speaking, would have differences in in Y, perhaps even differences in, in WI or in behaviors on the way to um, Y as we go downstream. Um, if you'll recall from um, the Bruner article and then uh, and then the Tarloff quote I put it last week we're talking about flatter hierarchies the flatter the hierarchy the less the stress so that um, in those say countries of the world and you'll see articles in this segment that talk about that um, articles uh, or countries where the income 
inequality of the hierarchy of that is flatter, um, the health outcomes are better. Uh, that's a biological plausibility if there's low stress uh, where it's flatter then, um, then health outcomes are uh, better. Remember the swollen adrenal gland of the poor in uh, England that we spoke about last week or the week before, I think it was last week when we were talking about Bruner. Um, so that's, that's one angle of it, uh, comparing one geographic area uh, with another, uh, the ZI of one area with the ZI of another. But there's another way of looking at it too, which we'll explore in this segment, and that is within an area, the variation of income. Um, so that, as we can imagine, those with higher income are likely to have better health outcomes than those in lower um, income. And I think the, uh, the chapters three and four speak to that specifically, so we'll, we'll come back to that in, uh, in a few minutes and look at the life course uh, beginning with chapter three, which is uh, early childhood and even before birth, and then picking it up in chapter four with general life course uh, conversation in, those, uh, in that chapter. Um, I want to point out again that the uh, PDF that you have, the World Health Organization, that is a link from the syllabus. That's a Marmo and Wilkinson uh, production. And um, the book itself, The Social Determinants of Health, is a Marmo and um, Wilkinson uh, production. It is an elaborated version of that summary document that you have that link to on, at the uh, on, in the uh, front page or so of the uh, of the syllabus. Um, looking at the looking at the article for a moment. Um, well, not so much the article. Excuse me, but the uh, the notes that I posted this week. Um, what what we're what we're talking about here when I talk about health dis health inequalities is really about income inequalities, that health inequalities track income inequalities. So a flatter hierarchy, better health. Um, a steeper hierarchy, poorer health. Uh, so there is a relationship between, shall we say, income inequality and health inequality. And then within a particular area, like in a city where you reside, um, if you have a steep hierarchy, then you'll have uh, differentiation in health outcomes that are that are uh, marked considerable differences. So, uh, in here, one thing I wanted to uh, point out to you is the um, there are a couple. There is this. Uh, if I can show it this way, here, this diagram or figure of the Robin Hood index, and it is just like what it sounds. Um, this old Robin Hood and what Robin Hood used to do is, uh, I guess he stole it, I don't know, maybe he borrowed it. Um, anyway, he took money, took wealth from the rich and distributed it to the poor. This one's called the Robin Hood Index. And if you look at this, um, as you move along the x-axis here, from uh, left to right, the um, index increases. So in the lower left-hand corner, it's a 28, and the, uh, in the lower right-hand corner, it's a 35, and some progression in between. So that is a measure of inequality. And um, so that would be how much income, let's say 35% redistribution, something like that. If we would have to redistribute the income by that much in order to get a flatter sort of hierarchical uh, distribution of income. If we look at the y-axis, we can see that most people can't be trusted. Now that's an interesting relationship, perhaps that we haven't thought about before, but it's central to the idea of where we're going next time, is the more unequal we are, the less socially cohesive we are. The more unequal we are, the less we trust one another. Uh, and we'll explore that in some detail uh, in segment three. Um, but here you can see that as the Robin Hood index increases, in other words, as you go to the right, that's more uh, proportional distribution of wealth that needs to be done to equalize out the distribution. As you move to the right, um, the uh, percentage of those, I think this is at the state level, you can see the initials or uh, abbreviations for the states, that this goes up 
suggesting that as the index increases, the level of trust decreases. Um, and if you look at the Moody lecture that I, I posted as one of the PowerPoint presentations on Blackboard, there's another one that looks very much like this. This is taken from a Kwachi article that you'll run into. Uh, I don't know whether it's this, it maybe this reading, I think it is, a segment of readings, uh, but for sure the next one, but I think it's this one. There's another figure in that one that looks just like this. And here in that one, the x-axis is as, as um, trust declines, uh, mortality increases. So that in those areas where uh, income inequality is highest, there is lower trust. Where there is lower trust, there is higher mortality. These two figures then sort of model in a, uh, in a visual the relationship between uh, context, behaviors, the biological plausibility in between uh, the context and health outcomes. This models that. So that um, if you've got poor, again, if you, if you are in an area, let's say, this would say, those areas where it would take more of a proportional distribution to equalize out income and wealth, um, that's where trust is low, and where trust is low is where mortality is high. So it's an argument about the biological plausibility also being associated with um, this relationship that um, where income is high, trust is low, where trust is low, mortality is high. So I draw that uh, at, to your attention, and I think that particular figure that's in those set of readings for this week uh, in a pretty nifty way summarizes what we're up to uh, as an introduction to this segment. And you'll see a lot of this as you go through these readings, comparisons by counties, uh, to some extent, mostly comparisons by state in this country, and then comparisons between countries, looking at these kinds of inequalities and then looking at the relationship between the scale of inequality and the scale of um, health inequality. Uh, making our argument here. And as we move into segment three, we'll see that well maybe it's not so much again, it's not so much about the income inequality as what it does to our the fabric of our connection and community. The more unequal we are, that fabric is is torn. We become less trusting of one another, uh, less reciprocity and in our relationships as a community and um, and then more stress as a result of that and then uh, poor health and you'll see in these articles too uh, discussions about where that hierarchy is steep there is also considerable amounts of um, higher rates of interpersonal violence that um, is often uh, associated with um, uh, the use of guns and things like that uh, murders, shall we say, murder rates. Let's take a look at the the, the uh, two chapters, chapter 3 and chapter 4. I think one thing that we, uh, we've mentioned this before, one thing we have to think about, uh, it's, it's right in front of us. Um, once we know about this, uh, the contextual influences on health, then we have to think about uh, what that means for our children. Uh, if we have children already who are in areas of inequality, they're, they're born into disadvantage. And we speak of this. We have spoken of this in our country and around the world. People speak of this, you know, almost offhandedly. You know, well, it's a, there's disadvantage being poor. Yes. But, uh, but now we see the, um, the biological aspects of that. Um, I think one of the things that's a very powerful a statement in chapter 4. I don't want to go page by page, but just highlight some things. Um, one of the things that uh, the author David Blaine says in chapter 4 in the introduction is that um, the social, a person's past social experiences become written into the physiology and pathology of their body. The social is literally embodied. The body records the past. So uh, think about that. The, uh, the social is literally embodied. And if you look at the, uh, when you take a chance, have a chance to look at chapter 3, 
on um, early life, then you can see that that embodiment of, of the social begins even before the child is born. You've seen that in an article that we had in last segment, intrauterine growth retardation, where the child or the fetus is, or the baby, is born uh, low birth weight but full term when low birth weight is most often associated with premature birth in this case um, the early life of that child while still in the mother's womb is influenced by the mother's stress who is influenced by the stress of the environment around her social environment around her say in the neighborhood and um, creates a situation where that fetus and does not develop as it might have otherwise and is born full term but low birth weight. So we've already seen that as, a, as an article last time and that this uh, chapter 3 just elaborates on that but I think the powerful statement here of the two pages that are the two chapters for me is that the social is literally embodied. So when you read these two chapters think about what Blaine says and see the argument that the, art, that the authors make uh, that um, demonstrate that. Um, if you look at you know, early life, scan back over here, one of the things that, uh, this is uh, Wadsworth and Butterworth's article, in their introduction, early life health has lifelong effects that result from the interaction of biological development and social and environmental circumstances. Um, lifelong eff effects. So when you go to the next chapter, and we're talking about the life course, um, you'll see when you b read these some of the articles in this uh, segment, that when they're talking about ill health at, in the adult, they're, talking, they're taking it back, sort of in the embodiment of the early social environment of, the, of that individual when they were a child, and how the ill health of the child has pursued, shall we say, that individual throughout her or his life so that to some extent the uh, health outcomes in later life are the consequences of social and economic determinants of early life and um, that's what these two chapters are all about I don't uh, there are, you can I think they're fairly clear there's some technical aspects of it that you can pursue if you like uh, but I, I just get the basic idea of what we're talking about here and I think um, um, the, you can, there are some graphs and figures that are always good for visualizing in both. I want to point out at the end of each chapter you'll notice that there's a section called policy implications. Now, if you stop and you think back on that uh, Marmo and uh, Wilkinson uh, World Health Organization presentation, the summary presentation of social determinants of health, each one of those segments ended with policy implications. So when we talk about about this and maybe as you begin working through uh, your your papers in each segment and begin thinking about the overall paper um, later in the semester what are the policy implications of, of the particular theme that you're going to take in order to change this what do we have to do we used to have the idea we don't have it too much anymore uh, we used to have the idea that we had a progressive tax system in this country then um, those with higher wealth would pay a greater share and to kind of help equalize out the distribution to some extent um, and by doing that uh, creating shall we say a, a better playing field maybe not uh, bringing money down to those with uh, less money but using those taxes to um, improve schools and um, uh, social and, and uh, health resources for the entire community regardless of where they're where they were in the scale of wealth uh, we've kind of gotten away from that um, a lot of these things now education and uh, health have become I think we tend to think of them as a commodity uh, rather than as a right uh, an interesting place for the country to be in in discussion uh, whether health is a commodity or is it a right um, but anyway um, take a look at these um, two chapters and understand the life course from the moment of conception until 90 years later the moment of death uh, that a lot of what is happening in the very early days even before the child is born it begins the 
embodiment, the social embodiment, uh, the consequences uh, in later life of the uh, social and environmental determinants of early life. So um, I think that'll be enough for today. And um, I'll post some more notes uh, next week, elaborate on the theme a little more of segment one and another video. So uh, for me right now, I don't know when you'll see this, but for me right now it's Friday and there's a weekend coming up. Bit of rain, uh, some cool weather I think. So uh, there's a weekend coming up. Y'all be safe out there, you hear? And uh, talk to you next week.